Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, Haley Perlis. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting, Life Unscripted. I'm so grateful to have you here today. How are you? I'm great, Christina. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, you're welcome. You are going to talk to our audience now. We talked just a teeny bit before we got started here, the importance of movement and exercise, because people confuse thinking, oh, I went and did my hour in the gym at the end of the day or whenever, but movement and exercise are two separate things, both very important. And you're going to talk about the usefulness of desk exercise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is really focused more on the, on the movement piece. But as you said, yes, movement and exercise are different. They have diff the activities are different. The purpose of them is different and the impact that they have, um, on us to prevent burnout and mm. is also different. So yeah. we can dive right in. You know, it's, what's very interesting. I recall when I had first got my business going, my, my own business, I would make this deal with myself that I will leave my desk when I make that sale or when I do X, Y, Z and whatever and i would be there 16 hours burned at the end really demoralized and feeling i got nowhere and then my friend said to me well if you just got up and went for a 30 minute walk in nature or something you clear your brain out and you maybe would be a lot more productive than just sitting here banging your head against the wall i'll make this happen i'll just try harder <laughs> you're absolutely right no it yeah. doesn't work because you're just stressing your emotions and stressing your mind Mm -hmm. And not really, you know, it's pushing and pushing and pushing. And then you get to this wall. But if you were to take those 30 minutes, mm -hmm. and I would even say sometimes if you don't have 30 minutes, if you have 30 seconds, I can, I can share with you what oh, you, yeah. you can do physically in 30 seconds, but let's okay. just stick with the 30 minutes first. Okay. Yes. 30 minutes going for a, like you said, outside human movement and fresh air is mm -hmm. the best way to change your emotional state and give yourself a mental recovery so that when you come back, you may have thought of something, you may have solved a problem, you have been more creative, more innovative, more collaborative yeah. when you come back. Yeah, and I found, you know what really helped me? We had a guest come on, Savvy, this many years ago when I was doing that beating my head against the wall thinking, if I just try a little harder at my desk, keep pushing at this problem, it'll get better, and it didn't. But one of the guests came on and said, she challenged my audience to do 30 minutes for 30 days in nature. Like go, and if you're in the city, just go for a walk, go to your local park, whatever, whatever. I said, okay, I'm gonna do it. And so I went along with the challenge and a number of other people in the audience. And for one, I just lost, 10 pounds just doing that mm -hmm. um but it's what you're talking about it's it's more than just any pounds you might lose it's the mental clarity and what it does for your whole mental state as well as your body absolutely and you know we talk a lot about meditation and sometimes meditation is difficult for people but this could be an active meditation when you are on your walk when mm -hmm. you go out there and it might be 30 minutes but just take one minute of those 30 minutes and yeah. just focus on what you see mm -hmm. then focus on what you hear they mm. focus on how you, on what you feel, you know, with the ground underneath you, or maybe, you know, the coldness on your, on your skin or the heat on your skin. Mm. If you can taste something like the salt in the air, if you're on the beach or something, or you just go through your senses. Mm. And that's actually a way to give yourself some centeredness and mindfulness. And it's a type of active meditation. It's not the exact same thing as a stillness, but it, it definitely is a nice transition and a mental and emotional recovery break, which is what we need throughout the day. No, I, I so love this because one thing I found, I told you just before we got started that I had worked on transforming my own health this past year, but it was so important for me to get calm throughout the day, not just rush, rush, rush. I think what ends up happening is we always feel I've got so much on my plate, I've got to work harder. And harder doesn't necessarily mean you're making the best gains. I found working with my mentor, he said, well, get up an hour earlier, which I thought, oh no. But waking up an hour earlier gave me an extra hour every day. What are you going to do with that time? For one, I added some exercise in there. But on top of it, I found that because I was more mentally alert with adding in the movement and the exercise, I was getting more done. And at the end of the day, now here's the piece I got to work on, the sleep bit. I'm still working on that bit. But yeah, you get so much more done when you're able to slow down and do these things. I think people feel that if I do these things like you're talking about, go in and do this meditative, active meditative or movement that I'm going to lose time in the day to do the other things I I'm scheduled to do. Well, let me share this. And I get it does. A lot of people feel guilty for taking time. If I'm, if I'm not in front of my computer, if I'm not working on this task, I'm wasting time. But my background is sport and performance psychology. Professional mm -hmm. athletes do not recover as a reward. 
nor do they recover when they have the time, which is what I feel the dialogue, the story we're telling ourselves. They recover because it is a mandatory component of their performance program. When we go to the gym and I put in, you know, I add weights to my hands and then I rip and I tear my muscle fibers in a bicep curl. Mm -hmm. I'm not growing there. I'm stressing and ripping and tearing. In order for me to grow stronger, to renew energy, I need to drop the weights and recover. It is an essential part of my performance routine. Mm -hmm. So if we can start creating or adapting that story to our work, when we take five, 10, 15, if you can, 30 minutes for that nature walk, and then you come back, you will have renewed energy that makes you more efficient that makes you more productive. Mm -hmm. So that email gets written faster. Those ideas come up faster. And I just want to make one more point because you said going harder, right? When you're not feeling you're doing a good enough job, you go harder. Mm -hmm. To me, it is the, (laughs) I call it the quicksand of misery. If (laughs) I keep on going and going, going, and and, um, I'm losing my best self, I'm losing Mm -hmm. my best performance and I don't feel good. And so I try to go harder and harder, but then my stomach gets in knots and I can't think clearly. And then I'm irritable and I don't even want to be around myself, let alone Mm -hmm. anybody else. So I'm sinking further and further into my own quicksand of misery. Mm -hmm. But because we are high achievers and because we feel guilty, we go harder, faster, but what's the mm-hmm. fastest way to sink into quicksand, <laughs> to struggle, to push. So you're you actually doing yourself a disservice. Instead, stop, mm-hmm. reset for your, for your um, performance. It's like mm-hmm. a performance program. It's mandatory that recovery piece and then come back in. I but love that recovery that. is only mental and emotional. We've been physically recovering all day long, sitting in our seats. <laughs> exactly. But now let's talk because we do have quite a few people that have listened in that are really type A and they're like, I bang it out. I go in the gym, you know, every evening for an hour, hour and a half. I bang out those weights. Now you mentioned something very important that's the most imperative for life and exercise, which is the recovery part. Um, how do you know how much recovery you need? Because I'm guessing everyone is different. And depending on what kind of workout you're doing, the recovery is different. Yeah, it's very, yes, it is very different depending on, if we're, are we talking about exercise? Like while we're in the, in the weight room, how much recovery or throughout the day? Uh, well, it, it would be depend on the movement and the exercise. If you are doing the heavy weights is one thing. If you are, yeah, yeah it's different for every, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I know a lot of my um, fitness enthusiasts who I consult with, they will say, I don't have enough time to exercise. Mm -hmm. And then when we look at their actual program, it is taking them a whole lot longer to get through their reps and their sets because they're recovering actually too long. Hmm. Yeah. Cause they'll might, they'll do, you know, three sets of 15 reps, for example, and then they'll recover for five minutes. <laughs> yeah. You don't need that, you know, just take a brief recovery. Mm-hmm. I don't want to recommend a specific time because it really mm-hmm. depends on your goals and all that, but mm-hmm. you tend in, in the exercise regimen, people tend to recover too long. You don't need to do that. Mm-hmm. You can also be recovering mu- one muscle part while stressing another. Mm-hmm. So it's not, we can save you time by strategically working through this recovery exercise, yeah. recovery exercise. I like that. Yeah. But I mean, my, I, my, uh, my trainer was doing such, you know, let's work on shoulders today or legs, that type of thing. Um, but you know, I was thinking, Oh, I'll go twice a day. And my husband's like, no, no, no chill. Because you want to know that you are giving yourself and your body the necessary break it needs to be at its peak and best. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now let's talk about the desk exercise stuff uh, because you want to do that movement and people get stuck. I know I do. You sit there hours at your computer, but there are things you can do to add that movement throughout the day. Now I'm thinking how much pushback people might get at the job when they start doing some of these desk exercise, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, it's interesting. And, and, uh, we're looking to, we're looking to spread this around and and it'll come, there might be some giggles that go with it, but, but I, I like it. So here's a couple of um, stats that we can understand. 25% of Americans spend more than eight hours a day sitting, not including sleep. Mm -hmm. And only 4%, 4% spend less than four hours sitting. So, you know, the remainder percentage, which is the bulk is somewhere between more than four hours and less than eight, but that's a lot of time just sitting. Yeah. However, I I already hear your audience saying, I don't have these 30 minutes to give up. I don't have, you know, those minutes. So think about it as recovery pauses. For example, every, between every email, stand up and sit down five times. You're basically doing five squats between every email. 
or every hour, you know, stand up and, and go and get yourself a new glass of water, for example, so that now you're drinking, but you have to get up and go. Interestingly enough, a couple of days ago, um, I offered my boyfriend to go and grab him water. And he said, are you trying to spare me from walking the stairs? Because ah. he knows, no, I'm going to go get my own glass of water. Thank you for offering, but I need to walk those stairs. Because mm -hmm. if not, then I'm standing here for another, you know, or sitting for an additional hour. So that's how we want to think about it. How can we insert little, you know, less than a, one to two minutes or even less little things that mm -hmm. you can incorporate because that's the movement. That's the desk size, but it's really movement. Blood is going to circulate through your body. Mm -hmm. Blood yeah. carries oxygen, blood carries glucose, blood carries energy. But if you're not, if you're just sitting there, blood is pooling, causing you to actually be more fatigued. Mm. Yeah. And that op opened up a whole other can of worms. Like I was having issues with my sugar levels. Then I was getting numbness in the bottom of my feet and my legs. Very bad. You know, not a direction you want to head in. Um, but I love that you mentioned it because it doesn't have to be extreme. What I had a couple of people who did things like put a little, uh, what do you call them? Like bike things under your desk where you just move Pedal. your feet. Pedal. So it's not looking too obscene in the office, but at least you're moving your legs. Another person had bought a small treadmill. He's, he is obsessed with it right now, but he said, now I'm obsessed everywhere we go. I, I want to park at the other side of the, uh, uh, the mall because I want to walk as much. I want to climb stairs. I don't want to take ele escalators, elevators. My husband, my wife is like, what the hell, man? Uh, but you know, it's because now he's found that I want to move continually. And I think our bodies were meant to move. Absolutely. I used to, this is my area of expertise. I, and I'm a group fitness instructor. I used to park illegally. So I wouldn't have to walk far to go to the gym. Ah. It doesn't make sense. I didn't want to have to walk far to go and exercise. <laughs> so I had to reframe my own, but I have another trick that's far okay. less expensive than treadmills. And, uh, those I little lights out of your desk, Yeah, tennis balls, go get yourself tennis balls. Now they're your tennis balls. You can do what you want with them and mine are mine. So I can do what I want with them. And I stick them in my armpits. And I stick them in my armpits while I'm typing mm -hmm. or while I'm driving. I also use them as massage sometimes, but mm -hmm. this exercise, you put them in the armpits and the name of the game is to prevent them from falling out. Mm -hmm. So what that does, it, it forces you to have good body posture. Mm -hmm. And as soon as those balls fall out, it's because you've got lazy. And then that becomes your clue to stand up and just give yourself one to two minutes of movement, probably have to go fetch the balls and then bring them, <laughs> and then bring them back. Mm -hmm. And this does look funny, but I have shared this uh, in, with many of my in-person trainings yeah. and uh, people have sent me pictures with tennis balls in their armpits. I welcome you to send me pictures with tennis balls in your armpits, yeah. but it helps keep the blood flowing. Yeah. And, and that's the whole key to it. Really keep your body moving. And because as kids, you know, it's so funny. I said to someone recently, when you were a kid, you didn't think I got to exercise. You just constantly move. Do you see a baby not stop moving? They are constantly moving because it is natural to the human body to constantly be moving and grooving. And for them, it's called play. It's just, we're just always moving. And as adults, we we put a label on it's exercise. I'm going to do boot camp. I'm going to do this. And it's really, why don't you just go have fun? Yeah. <laughs> and when kids misbehave, what do parents say? Go outside and run, vent, <laughs> right? Because mm -hmm. they're emotionally and mentally exhausted. They need to go out there, move their body, and give their minds and emotions recovery. Yeah. We need to look at it. We need to look at exercise and movement the same way for ourselves. Now, share with me, because when I was in the office, one thing I found for me that I would get that three o'clock, I'm so exhausted, and I would go, this is crazy. I worked at a, a place that had a big M&M machine. It looked like a gumball machine, but it was peanut M&Ms, and you could fill up as much as you want. I didn't have an off button. So I just turned it, I got a bowl of M&Ms every day at three. Gee, I wonder why I was 180. Uh, but uh, yeah, and I was like snacking away at this, but it was getting rid of that low I felt. Um, is that due partly to, to no movement, uh, that low is, and would people not need as much of that sugar high if they were moving more? Yeah, I think it's physiological and psychological. And I just opened my eyes when you said that, cause I'm looking at, I'm looking at you now. And I was like, 180, wow, you did that. You, you've done such great service for yourself. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and I love the peanut M&Ms too. Yeah. Uh, it's a combination. So there I'd ask, you know, when was the last time you would eat? Because if you're going more than four hours of not eating, your body is actually craving glucose energy. And so you're going to want that in a quick sugar. 
I don't know anyone who goes four hours or longer without food and all they crave is kale. Yeah, it's, it's true. <laughs> so we crave these, we crave these simple sugars. And if the M&Ms is right there for you, you're going to go for it. Uh-huh. The other thing is that, yes, if we have been sitting all day, we are emotionally and mentally exhausted and our bodies are lethargic because we haven't moved, m- moved. We are psychologically low. We are psychologically, I don't know, we're sad, but maybe we're bored. Mm -hmm. And so we, we lose the discipline and we just go for an instant gratification, instant reward. If you were feeling more energized, you feel better about yourself. You might make different choices. Yeah. I I think you're right, Haley, because when I started this regimen with my trainer, I found working out in the morning, I come into work revved up and I used to tire out about three. And now even when six hits, I still have energy. Uh, where I did not before. And so I think this new regimen has definitely um, helped me get that energy. And I like that you not only mentioned the movement, but you know, you need to eat. And I think people don't think that, Hey, I'm, I'm, if my body's saying it needs something, maybe just, you know, having some healthy snack on, on board. Like my friend has some pickles that she likes pre pat whatever (laughs) drives your boat. Yeah. (laughs) You know, well, at least, yeah. And then I'm not saying don't ever have the M&Ms, but I am saying have it um, in, just organize it a little better, better yeah. plan. But here's the thing. If you said, you said three o'clock was when you'd go for the m So another little trick that I would offer is at two 30, eat something healthy uh-huh. at two 30, make sure that you're drinking water. If you haven't had a drink, maybe throw some lemon in and maybe a little bit of good honey. So yeah. that when three o'clock comes and you do, and you are done with work, you're not going to be psychologically or physiologically addicted to those M&Ms because you will yeah. have served yourself better with healthy food, healthy snack and, and hydration beforehand. I love it. Well, where can everyone find out more about you, uh, get in, in contact with you? How can they do that? Sure. My website is the best place. Um, Dr. www.drhaleyperlis.com. You can opt in and get weekly communications. You can contact me directly. Everything is at, as at your fingertips, right at my website. Well, this has been very, very informative. I thank you so much for sharing with our savvy audience today. Thank you, Haley. Thank you so much. Like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.